Andy Gresh, part of our New England Nation team, joining us now to talk Patriots and Chargers. All right, Gresh, Patriots are three and four, midway point in the season. They would have liked to pick up a win or two more at this point, but now you really have to start playing for the playoffs. The calendar is about to flip to November, and a good AFC team is your opponent this week. What do the Patriots have to do to pick up a win? Well, I think the most important thing is to run the ball because this Chargers defense is absolutely terrible at stopping the run, giving up over 160 yards a game. I think this is going to be the first week where we're going to get thunder and thunder, let's say. Damian Harris or Andre Stevenson, big backs, force that Chargers defense to have to tackle well, which I don't think they can do. Then, Maury, it's chunks in the play-action game. If you're going to run the ball well, it's not just completed for five yards. It's get 15 yards. Find a way to maybe have, find a field flipper along the way. And on defense, they had better cover Austin Eckler better than they did Alvin Kamara when he came here a couple weeks ago with New Orleans. Not the exact player, but Eckler does some of that same stuff. What's the next step for this Patriot offense? The last two games, eight for eight in the red zone, scoring all eight touchdowns, 29 points against the Cowboys, and then over 50 against the Jets. In your eyes, what's that next layer that Mac Jones and company can work on? I think it's getting healthy, number one, because then you can get the correct offensive line in there, and Trent Brown might be back. But also, you know, it's just gaining the confidence of each other. Mac Jones knows what certain guys can do. And the Patriots did a really good job of getting John o. Smith involved early. But you can see that Mac Jones and Hunter Henry have a connection. You can see it's there with Jacoby Myers. Now let's bring the rest of the guys. Quite honestly, they need a number one receiver because they think about it, if you get a number one receiver, everybody moves down a spot and then they're where they're supposed to be instead of having Nelson Aguilar trying to play the role of a number one receiver. So to me, it's gaining the confidence in the guys you have and then letting Mac do his thing because we know he can play. So the trade deadlines around the corner. Do you see any potential uh, pieces that the Patriots could add? You know, it's interesting because you'd say running back and corner and they traded Sonny Michelle and then they traded Stephon Gilmore as well. So, you know, you would, okay, maybe they're not going to go that route. Quite honestly, I think it's if they beat the Chargers, which, by the way, even though the Chargers have a better record, get that head-to-head -head win. That's what matters in the wild card race at the end of the year. But I, I, maybe it's lineman help. Honestly, I think it's going to be either the big bargain, like a disgruntled guy who you know has a ton of talent who will come here, shut up, and then go get a contract, or somebody who will go get a big free agent contract next year and the Patriots just accelerate giving that team their third-round compensation for that player being signed away. Everybody likes to talk about the big sexy names, Allen Robinson, people like that. Could you see a fit? Uh, I'm not so sure. And I think Allen Robinson is going to require a second round pick. And then you got to sign him at the end of the year. Sure. I think for the Patriots, if they're going to go high level, they'll want another year on that contract. A la Sanu a couple years ago. Okay. All right. Defensively now, obviously the Chargers still pose uh, a really good offense. Justin Herbert's still under center. And it seems like the new coach has it rolling. What does this defense have to do to slow down that attack? Uh, well, it's kind of keep everything in front of them, quite honestly. And it's a little bit of the way that the Patriots dealt with Tom Brady. Stay back, change your coverages as much as you can, force the quarterback to think. It was interesting that Bill Belichick had mentioned that with Justin Herbert, there is kind of the, the read action, but they don't really run the quarterback very much. So I don't know if that was the, well, let's bait him into it a little bit or if that's just a part of who the Chargers are. Austin Eckler's a big threat. Linebackers have to cover, or they got to find a way to get Duggar or maybe Phillips on Eckler out of the backfield, which will be tough and does expose you with the run game. All right, maybe a special teams player, too, like we saw last year, Gunnar Oshevsky punt return. I think they had a blocked field goal in that one, if I I'm remembering think correctly. I, I'm there was that sure. West Coast swing where they were away for a while, yeah. so those two games have blended together. They do blend together, but you're right, and that's where they do have an advantage in coaching as well because Brandon Staley's done a good job, but he's a neophyte compared to Hoodsworth. Exactly. All right, 4 o'clock Eastern on WPRI 12. You can catch the kickoff. He's Andy Gresham, Maury Hirsch, and we'll be back after this.